Good morning, Denmark. That's not a lot of a view. All right, so <clears throat> we are now in Aarhus in Denmark uh, after visiting my playhouse just to try to KFC for the first time in my life. Wasn't very nice, not gonna go there again, even if I get the chance. But uh, we're heading towards uh, Sweden now. Uh, it's at the point of central Sweden. Gonna visit someone in Hulsfred. But that's a long ways away. And somewhere up here, roughly around there, is our goal where we're gonna take the ferry home. So, I think I'm probably gonna end up somewhere close to Chip and Harmon today, somewhere around there. Uh, or perhaps I'll cross over to Sweden. We'll see. Let's spend the night. It's uh, quite late, I think it's about 10 in the evening now. Uh, I get up quite late, so I can, I've got several many hours of driving. They're still in me. So, yeah. Making either Udense or Chip and Hamn. Either of those is a fine goal. Let's see how it goes. We're not going to make the full drive to Vado. Because that's going to be like 10 hours in reality. Right, let's buy some fuel and get going. And now we're back in the tunnel. Going to Sweden. I was going to get a nice shot of entering the tunnel, but this lovely camcorder decided not to cooperate. It would have just been a lovely blurry mess coming through. We're in a few kilometres, we're going to be out on the Orazund Bridge. I'm not sure if there's a toll office on this side or if a toll office is on. Just on the other side. It would make sense to have it here. And I guess we'll find out. Ah, that's the end of the tunnel. Are we going to get told? No, it seems we're going to get told in Sweden. And I'm never going to see this bridge in broad daylight. <laughs> you have a big. Kill us over that way. Although this camera is too shitty to see them. Ha! You really tell how Sweden, or probably the Nordic countries in general, are kind of end stations for the major road to Europe. Because this is still the E45, it's uh, 3 in the morning, uh, so it's not going to be the rush hour. But, uh, there's one car coming and there's one way off there in the distance. Uh, I've been driving the E45 in both Germany and Denmark at the same hour and it's been packed full. Just lorries upon lorries and uh, cars upon cars. It's real refreshing to just come to a country where you can just uh, drive on a major road like this and be pretty much alone. Because that, that's what makes the other countries, there's another car. That's what makes the more southern European countries so annoying to drive to unless, drive on unless you go on the really small, barely used roads. You're just always going to be crammed in with a million other cars. There's just such a high population density compared to the Nordics. I mean, you, you would never see a major interconnecting road this empty ever down there, I assure you. And especially not the fucking M25 in the UK. And I'm gonna call that a day. We're apparently in Markarid right now. Parked uh, by a little tiny little lake out in nowhere. So we made it a fair bit further than I did hope for. We went way like went way past Malmö, way past Chippenhaun and way 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 past Udense, which is there somewhere. 
So, all in all, a good day. And if we're lucky, tomorrow I'm going to be able to make the last dash up there and get home. Maybe, in the best of cases. But, for the time being, I need to rest. It's like way early. 4.20. Well, I didn't have any of that, sadly. Good morning, Sweden. It's uh, about 8 degrees Celsius, of course. Raining and very, very windy. Oh. Right in nowhere. The side of camping on the free parking. <laughs> Spent the night. Just got up, had a piss, gonna uh, make some porridge and be on my way. It's biting cold, humid air, raining, and uh, eight degrees. This environment is something which I actually think really sets the Nordic like proper Nordic countries, not including Denmark, <coughs> apart from the rest of what I've seen of Europe. So much of these countries are just made of this incredibly dense, barely touched forest. I mean, nowhere else on this trip have I seen a properly forested area. Perhaps I've just been in the wrong places, but it seems that uh, uh, the countries further south are just so heavily agricultural that uh, they, they've just turned any forest they might have had into farmland. Or perhaps it's always just been fields. But uh, this has a real value to me if I'm, you know, just being a camper because I can just disappear in a forest like this. There are so many little turn-offs and uh, places you can just go and find a little place in the woods and camp for the night. I love driving in the forest in sunset. The lighting, I'm not sure how well it's going to show up, but it's just so beautiful. We have the sun rays just kind of hitting the orange green trees right from the side. And now I'm sitting here, a few kilometers away from the Kapellskär harbour in Sweden and this is the last night on the road for this time. Tomorrow at 12 I'll be boarding a ferry taking me back home to a little island with my basement workshop and everything's going to return back to normal. Uh, it's a bit sad, is it? Isn't it? I've been getting so <laughs> comfortable in here. This really has turned into my home, this place. Everything has its place, everything has its mess. Hmm. I'm getting all nostalgic for just yesterday. But all good things have to come to an end. And this means that, at least for your part, this channel is going to return to normal programming quite soon. Say so goodnight. Feels weird. Feels really weird. I've already turned off the light and I could see anything, but it just struck me that the really important thing about this entire endeavour uh, was that I wanted to learn something. And that was whether or not I actually need all the things I'm used to living with. And uh, the amount of comfort I've been able to enjoy in this toilet-sized compartment on wheels has been absolutely amazing. The only thing that I feel that I've thoroughly missed a couple of times 
has been heating. But beyond that, food preparation, uh, toilets, you name it, has been no problem. No problem at all. And I've just been able to go from place to place to place and make my way. And that just feels so liberating to know that I do not have to be tied down to the luxuries of home life with very little additional changes I could just go anywhere basically and I know that that's within my capability and that's something I just value immensely Good night. Uh, good morning, Sweden. See, this is the part I won't miss. It's like literally like sleeping in your refrigerator. And my floor is a server. <laughs> Although part of it's Sweden, lots of little places where you can just slide in and disappear for the night. And over there, I believe is the last ferry we're going to be waiting for on this trip. The Viking Line MS Rose Cellar. Carrying us back home in just about an hour. And that's Sweden leaving us behind. In fact, I've been on this ferry for so long that I can't even see the country anymore. I still haven't shook the feeling of just oddity being en route home. I've been on the road for 40 days, so I've come to the conclusion that uh, I'm like Jesus or Moses or whoever was that guy who walked around in the desert for a good long time according to the old storybooks. Perhaps I felt this way when they arrived at their promised land or wherever they were going. I'm not Christian so I wouldn't know. I'm getting the feeling that I have a bit better access to water than they did. Though. I have a, have a natural giant map of the Orland Islands and Finland and Sweden. So right in the middle of the frame we have Orland and we're en route roughly there. So there's a Sweden here, so let's see what we are. Yeah, there's Nortelia. So we should have the harbour. Oh, yeah, I can't find the harbour. Right off the top of my head. It's somewhere around there. And here's Maria Hamn, where we're going to be arriving. Somewhere around there. And when it's just a half an hour drive to my house, just around there somewhere. And you can kind of see why Wallen belongs to Finland uh, from look at this map, because to Sweden you basically just have the open sea whereas towards Finland you have uh, basically a landmass. Uh, none of these uh, little pieces of land are actually connected, it's just little islands, but it's generally shallow and nastier waters going there. And perhaps in a few hundred years there's actually going to be a land bridge between there, whereas that's going to be keep being water and open sea for quite a long while still. And for, for comparison, this route is a roughly two hours, whereas uh, this route, which is the main Finland route, is uh, five to six hours. And car deck just before arrival. I'm not sure what the beeper sound is. It's not them opening the gate, even though you'd suspect that would be the case. We still haven't arrived at the shore. But something I noticed, even though 
remember we put about 10,000 kilometers on this vehicle. We have no leaks. Not a drop of anything underneath the car. Against the clean, nice and clean car deck. No, but that, <laughs> that flu is not coming out of the car. That's just an indent which has gathered some water. Else that would be a rear differential fluid and if I, if I were leaking rear differential fluid, I would have been out of that stuff about 5,000 kilometers ago. Disembarkation. Finally, back home. Red asphalt, weird number plates. Oh, how lovely. And we are almost just about home. Sweet home. I haven't been here for a while. <laughs> Doggies haven't seen me either for quite some time. <sighs> and that's it. Now we're going to return to normal programming, I guess. So thanks to everyone who joined me. I hope you enjoyed these videos. I know lots of you didn't. But thank you for watching anyway. Cheerio. So now that I'm not going to be living here a lot more, I'll just have to start disassembling this thing for winter. I'm still going to need it for a little thingy in like a couple of days, so I'm not going to disassemble everything right now, but the file server is going to be coming out. I need to bring this inside, grab all my footage out of it, and edit videos on a more proper computer. Finally. That's going to be so nice. Oh, home sweet home with my CRT and my computer. Does it still work? Ah. And my high def displays and my mouse and my keyboard. Ah. Oh joy.